for you. Welcome to our broadcast. This is Pastor Patrick uh, Wule, Pastor of Beto All Irish Ministries, South Africa. Um, we will come in your way, um, you know, in a series that we want to do on entitled Abiding in God. Abiding in God. For the next couple of days, we will be coming your way with this series, and uh, it is our prayer that the Lord will uh, bless you as you take a listen and as you take your time to tune in and to listen. Um, we'll be speaking from, from John chapter 15, the book of St. John chapter 15, and um, we'll read from verse verse 1 to 7. Actually, we're going to be dealing with verse, uh, we're going to be dealing with verse, our, our key point is in verse 7, but um, I just want to read from verse 1 to verse 7 so as to connect you and connect us. It say, I am the vine, verse 1. Say, I am the vine and you are the, um, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch in me that beareth fruit, he bring it forth, uh, it bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean um, through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. He says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Uh, for without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, um, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast him to the fire, and they are uh, burned. Verse 7 says, If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, ye shall ask whatever you will, and it shall be unto you. And so, that's, that's, that's the word. He says, If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, he said, Ask whatever you will, and it shall be given unto you. So, uh, before we proceed, um, I want us to look at the spiritual definition um, of uh, the biblical, sorry, the biblical meaning of the word abide. You know, it, it means it means to remain stable or it means to remain stable or fixed in a state or to remain stable or fixed in a state. Okay. It means to continue in a place, to continue in a place. It means to so join, um, you know, uh, it means to abide by, to conform, to abide by the rules. It means to accept without rejection. To accept without rejection, it means to acquiesce, to acquiesce in 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 will uh, abide by your own decision. In other words, it, it means for you to voluntarily abide by your own decisions. Okay, to abide by your own decisions. And so, for the next few days, um, we are going to be talking about the believer's relationship with Christ. And and that's the why that's where that's where we're going to look at you know uh, John fifteen verse seven the believer's relationship with Christ and specifically we want to focus on what it means to abide in Christ that's what we want to focus on we want to focus on what are we are going to focus on what it means to abide in Christ that's what our focus is going to be but I want to share with you a brilliant definition by Arthur Pink. Arthur Pink um, gave a brilliant definition of what it means to abide in Christ. And let's, let me just read what Arthur Pink says uh, when, it comes to, when it comes to abiding in Christ. He says to abide in Christ, it means to continue in a joyful recognition of the value of his perfect sacrifice and the power of his blood. And the power of his blood. Secondly, uh, Arthur Pink says to abide in Christ is to maintain a spirit and an attitude of complete dependency on God. Maintain a spirit and an attitude of complete dependency on God. We also say to abide in Christ means to draw from his fullness. To draw from his fullness. That's what Arthur Pink says to draw from his fullness. Listen, this, this is what the Bible says. And Jesus in verse 7 of, of Matthew chapter 15, he said, if you abide in me. Now listen, he didn't say, um, and I abide in you. No, he didn't use that in verse 7. He said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Now what does it mean? He simply saying, if my teachings abide with you, as to control you, 
That's what it means. If my teachings abide with you and you are controlled, directed, guided by my teachings, your thoughts, your ideas are, are guided by my teachings and, 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 and your inspirations are guided by you know my teachings. I, you are guided by my teachings, I'm sorry, and you are inspired by my teachings. He said, then ask whatever you will and I shall be given unto you. Ask whatever you will and it shall be done to you. So you see, he says, if my word now do you know what it means for the word of God to abide in you when the word of God abide in you one of the things it does is that it affect it affects your prayer it affects the way you pray when the word of God abide in you it affects the way you pray because when you pray you pray the word of God when you pray you pray according to the will of God because the will of God is in the word of God so you pray according to the word of God so Jesus said if you want your prayer to be answered then you must abide in him and let his word abide in you so that when you pray you will not pray your feelings you will not pray your thoughts you will not pray the circumstances you will pray the word of God you will pray the word of God he says if my word controls if you are controlled directed guarded your thoughts are controlled your dreams your aspiration are controlled and guided by my word he said, when you ask anything, meaning you will be speaking my word back to me. He said, it shall be done unto you. If you ask anything, it shall be done unto you. I'm going to share with you as time goes by a couple of benefits that we can receive just because we abide in Christ. A couple of benefits. And I want to share with you today benefit number one that you and I stand to, to, to receive when we abide in Christ. Benefit number one. Is that abiding in Christ means the fullness of joy. Abiding in Christ means the fullness of joy. In, in John chapter 15 verse 11, this is what he says. He said, these things I have spoken unto you, that I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy may be full. That my joy may remain in you, that your joy may be full. That's what he says. He said, my joy may remain in you. That your joy may be full. In other words, it is the joy of God that you need, that we need, so that our joy can be full. Because without the joy of God, we cannot have a fullness of joy. The fullness of joy. And the fullness of joy doesn't mean that, that you have everything together. It doesn't mean your bank accounts are cute and you know everything is good. No. Fullness of joy simply means that in the midst of the challenges, you can still have joy. In the midst of the struggle, you can still have joy. In the midst of what you go through, you can still have joy. Because he says in John 15, in, 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 in John 15, 11, he says, My joy abides in you. He said, then your joy will be full. Listen to me, folks. All you and I need is the joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord is is your strength in the midst of the challenges in the midst of the day of difficulties when you have the joy of the lord you can still be joyful even when there are challenges around you even when there are struggles around you even when things don't seem to be going fine because the joy of the lord is what you need to be strengthened even in the face of challenges because indeed the lord the joy of the lord is your strength I challenge you that as you go through this day, abide in God and let his word abide in you so that whatever you ask, you can receive. And understand that when you abide in God, one of the benefits that you receive is the fullness of joy. May your joy be full today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and I'll see you again.